Hello. In this video, like the last, we are going to be finding the derivative of a curve defined by an arc function, an inverse trig function. In this case, we are doing uh, y is the arc cosine of x, and I've already written it out and drawn a little graph because I realized that we already did that all uh, in the last video, and if you saw the video on the derivative of the curve uh, arc sine of x, then most of, this, most of these first steps should be pretty familiar. Thought it was useless to repeat them. All right, so we have this function, r cosine of x. It's defined by this curve here. And since this is clearly not a function, we are going to use implicit differentiation to take the derivative. So that means we're taking the derivative. I'll write it out again. Why not? I've got time. Implicit differentiation. Yeah, I can fit that in. There we go. So that means we're taking the derivative of both sides of this formula. Kind of like just some kind of algebraic operation. The derivative with respect to y is going to be equal to, oops, wait, we, for, we forgot a very important step. What we have to do, just like in the last video, is turn this into something that's easier to work with. In this case, arc cosine of x is not something that's particularly clear when you're taking the derivative of it. So it's going to be a much better if we just say x is equal to the cosine of y, which is an equivalent expression for our purposes. And uh, it will help us take the derivative of both sides. All right. So we are going to say the derivative with respect to x of x is equal to the derivative with respect to x of the cosine of y. All right, so that's the same as saying one is equal to, well, what's the derivative with respect to x of the cosine of y? Well, the cosine of y, that includes two functions or expressions, I like to say, because y is not quite a function of x. So it's not exactly clear to say that, so I'm going to say this is this outer function, or this outer expression is cosine of x, and then inside we have y. And they both have relationships to x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the outer function, which is cosine of x. We're going to say negative sine of x, except we can't say x because we take the derivative of the outside function and then plug in the uh, inside function, or expression, or whatever we're saying, and then we multiply by the derivative of our inside expression, which relates to x, that's y. So we're multiplying by the derivative of y with respect to x. Hence, dy dx, the derivative we are looking for, is negative 1 over the sine of y. Now, this is not in terms of x. And we can put it in terms of x if we want to but it requires that we define a parameter, just like in the last video. So the parameter I'm gonna choose, and it doesn't exactly matter, but the parameter that would usually be chosen, at least for this function, is the one from this point here to this one here. I'm just drawing arrows to signal where I knocked off the parameter. And this part of the function is, uh, well, this part of the curve is an actual function, as you, as you can plainly see, right? That it passes a vertical line test. Now, what are these points? Well, we were clearly going from uh, y is equal to 0 down here. But then what's this point up here? This point up here, where we're at negative 1. That should be probably, yeah, I didn't mark it perfectly. But when we go to negative 1, that means that, well, we've gone a half a cycle around. So that would be y is equal to pi, right? If x is the cosine of y, the cosine of pi is negative 1, and that's where we get to in our x value. So we are going to go, we are going to say, given that y is greater than 0, greater than or equal to, and I'm sorry, <laughs> less than, yeah, see, I did it again, I'm messing up this. Simplest part, y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi. 
I'm not sure why I keep writing that wrong, but there it is, should be right now. Uh, so we're just looking at that inner function. So now what we can say is, hey, we are dealing with a function. So we can treat this, we can treat, well, we can treat this as a function now. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to plug this in. We're gonna plug this in for y. We're gonna plug that in for y and we're, we are going to get that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative one over the sine of the arc cosine of x. All right, so we are gonna have to draw a triangle to figure that out. And I mean, it's clear if we don't look at this parameter, the slope is gonna vary between x points, right? We have an x point up here that goes in that direction, but then an x point down here that goes in that, it goes in the, this direction here. And you'll, you'll notice there's, there's a periodicity there and we're not going to look too far into it because I wanna actually get this video done. But when we actually assume this parameter, are plugging our, co our cosine of x in for y and then doing what we do with the right triangle here. Because it's kind of, the right triangle is a little misleading because of course it can't have any negative values um, even when a cosine can be negative. So when we draw the right triangle, that means we're essentially assuming that we're taking the sine of this arc cosine and because of that parameter, we're dealing with this positive triangle. I, if that's confusing, just don't worry about it. Know that this, this thing we're doing right here that we're about to do only works if we're dealing with um, certain parameters and we have to find one that works. So if the cosine, we're gonna say this is some angle, this part in here, it's a weird bracket. The arc cosine of x is this angle here and it's cosine is x, so we can just say, you know, the, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is equal to x, so we can just say x and one, that fulfills the parameter. Now what's the sign of that angle? Well, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the opposite is going to be the square root of one minus x squared. That just comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So we can say that the sine of the arc cosine of x is equal to the square root of one minus x squared. And we get our final answer. We get our final answer that dy dx is equal to negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. Now, why is it that this parameter was important? This is what I was trying to say before. Um, what you can essentially do is because when we're looking at a function like this, like up here, we're dealing with sines and cosines that can be negative. When we're dealing with, where we're, when we're thinking of a triangle like this, where it's actually in the world and we care about the lengths, there isn't going to be a negative length or two negative lengths. So we're not gonna have a negative sine or cosine. Imagine if we said that our triangle was like this and that this instead of, you know, despite this being a normal length and there not being negative distance, we had one minus x squared. Then our derivative would change and you'll notice that the difference between uh, the derivatives with respect to x, and I'm gonna draw this again. I'm gonna draw this again really quickly because I think that this is kind of important and we didn't touch on this in the last video. When we have these derivatives with respect to x, and that's not perfect, I realize that, um, like say here at, the, at one x point, we get one slope going that way and one slope going that way. So the reason that we don't deal with, and this isn't even really an accurate example either, it would be more like if we were dealing with a triangle like uh, this, we could say that we have, you know, negative we, we could say that we have all these negative values and I'm, I'm not gonna crowd up the page too much because I don't wanna complicate what we already have. Oh, that's not black, well, whatever. That's, there we go. The reason that these two answers are negative for these different points and we don't tend to say plus or minus, right? We wouldn't say, 
plus or minus because that's just that's just not how it's it, how it tends to be done. Uh, it's because our way of approaching this value when we plugged it in here um, involves kind of a thought experiment that works along the specific interval. <laughs> I hope that that wasn't too confusing uh, and that uh, you enjoyed. In the next video, we will be looking at the derivative of the arctangent of x.